If you use both a digital planner and an Apple or Google Calendar, you know it can be difficult to keep everything connected and make sure you don't miss out on any important appointments. Since digital planners are PDF templates and they're not software-based, it isn't possible to create a direct sync to a digital calendar like your Apple iCal or Google Calendar. But with the new shortcut I've built into this year's planners, it is possible to streamline the connection between your calendar, reminders, and other apps, making it easier to take action and get things done directly from your planner without having to task switch or interrupt your flow or focus. Now, this new shortcut allows you to both schedule out appointments by day or even by hour on your daily pages. It also makes it quick and easy to create new reminders or even set a timer or send a quick email note. Now, this is only compatible with iPad since it's built through the iOS shortcut technology and works with the native apps on your iPad, but you're able to seamlessly connect this with Google, Outlook, Yahoo, or other calendars. So even if you don't typically use your Apple iCal, you'll still be able to schedule directly to your calendar of choice, and I'll walk you through all the steps here in this video. So you'll notice I have two versions of the planner available. We have the classic version we all know and love, this does not include the shortcut integration, so if you use an Android tablet or just don't wish to use the shortcuts, the classic version is the one for you. It has some really exciting updates to navigation to really streamline things. But if you do have an iPad and want to use the shortcuts, make sure to grab this new version. You'll notice we have some additional icons on the page, and these show the location of the shortcut links. I've kept all these icons a consistent gray color, so it's really easy to see visually on the page which links are gonna open up the shortcut. We'll talk more about this in a minute. First, let's run through the steps to install the shortcut on your iPad. So right after purchasing your planner, you're gonna get this download guide, and this includes everything you need to get started with your new planner and it includes for the iOS shortcut planner information on downloading your shortcut as well as choosing your planner. So since this planner has so many different layout options, you can see I'll click through some of them, lined or dotted sidebar for the portrait, and then you also for landscape, you have eight different weekly options and then of course, each weekly option includes either Monday or Sunday start. So this download guide is kind of giving you like the ability to build your planner. And once you choose your specific version, you'll be able to download your planner and also the stickers, covers, mini planners, any bonuses that come with it. So if you're brand new to digital planning and you need some help with downloading and importing your planner, go ahead and video, uh, visit the, the getting started videos that I have on my site. They'll walk you through all the steps of downloading your planner. For the purpose of today's video, we are going to be focused on this iOS shortcut and how to use the new shortcut and how to get it installed. And so we won't be covering basic planner imports, uh, but you can grab that in another video. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna start with adding the shortcut and you just tap this button here. Now this is leading you to an iCloud shortcut link. I know it's, if you haven't used shortcuts before, it might feel kind of weird to install something new on your iPad. You can be assured that, you know, this is totally safe for your iPad. It's shared directly within shortcuts through an iCloud link. So it's very secure. You don't have to worry about what you're downloading here. So you click here and set up your shortcut now you can choose the app you use it in. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on GoodNotes, but if you use NoteShelf or Notability, just choose them from the list and then just hit Add Shortcut. Now, and then in my case, I actually have this already downloaded, so I'm gonna cancel out. I don't wanna replace it. But let me show you, then you'll see in your All Shortcuts you'll see Laurel Studio Planner, and that's how you know that it's been installed on your shortcuts. 
you can see I have a ton of other shortcuts. I, I really like using using them for different things, but you should just see this one, Laurel Studio Planner, appearing in your shortcuts list. So at that point, we know that we have installed our shortcut, we're all ready to go, and when we jump over into the planner, it is automatically going to work seamlessly with the shortcut. So I'm gonna start us off here with a tour of all of the shortcuts that are included in the planner. Now, if you ever wanna refer back to this, just jump over to your information page and I have them all detailed here in your calendar pages showing you where all of the link locations are and what they do. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've made all of the links this lighter gray color so that you can kind of visually see and know what to expect in your planner. So all of your links that go you know, two different pages internally in the planner are still under just plain text. And then these icons are all going to be triggering that external hyperlink. So first here on the month, we have this calendar, let me zoom in here for you. We have this calendar page option and you can see when I tap on a link, it's always going to be asking me, do I want to go to an extra link? That's a control in GoodNotes that we, we really can't override. So what I'm seeing here, this is actually just pulling a list of everything in my calendar within the 30 days you know, of the month. And so this is just a good quick reference. Now you can tap on any of these to open them in the calendar. One thing to be aware of is if it's a series of events, it will open the very first event in that series. But otherwise, you know, if it's a one-off event like this trip to the Botanic Garden, it's gonna open this up to that specific date and show that to me. And now your second link here is this calendar with kind of that action icon coming from it. And so this is actually going to open your calendar view to the specific month or week or day that you're on. So in this case, you can see here though that I do have to toggle my calendar over. So it has the ability to open your calendar to the specific date, but you do have to control your view. So now that I'm on my month, you can see that I'm seeing my month. So then if I jump over to February, it's going to open it up to that month. So jumping back into the planner here, you can see now we also have these plus buttons on every day. And this is to create a calendar event for that day. Now on the monthly and weekly views, this does create an all day calendar event, but you can easily change this to a specific time. And then you also have the ability, you know, to choose your calendar, invitees, set alerts, anything you need, and you can add it to your calendar. So let's just add a test here. I'm going to make this all day, just add, and then you'll see it's added there. And then whenever you have the shortcut or the calendar window open and you're done in there, just swipe it over and then you're back to your planner. Now on every page of the planner, you'll see this action icon. And this brings up a menu of actions. So even if you're on a note page or a non-calendar page, you have this option. Now from here, you can create a new event, add a reminder, set an alarm, start a timer, or send an email. And so that's really accessible from you know, every location in the planner. And again, I just swipe this over to close that out when I'm done.
Now, jumping down to our daily page, we actually have a lot of links here. One that I've added is to your to-do list. Now, it can be really helpful to be able to add some things out to your to-do list. I like to keep a running list and I like to list sweep at the end of the day, but there are some things that maybe you want to delegate out or be notified of at a certain time, like get a reminder prompt on your phone. So for example, let's copy pick up dry cleaning here. And I'm going to tap here to add that as a reminder. And this pops up here, and since I have it copied, I paste it here, hit done. And I actually want to be alerted at a specific time. Now, I actually really like using my when I arrive, when I leave, or messaging to catch me in a moment when it's not time bound. We're just gonna choose a time here and say, you know, at this specific time, I want to get that prompt reminder on my phone, hit done, and that's it. It's scheduled out, it's that easy. So again, I don't do this with everything on my to-do list. There are just some things that might be time bound or that I wanna delegate out. And that's when I really like using that integration. Now for your schedule, you have your open calendar to the specific day. You can schedule an all day event. But where I've also added links that I find really helpful are on all of these hours. So once again, I am going to copy this. This is a good example when I have, you know, a project team meeting, I've planned this in my schedule, but now I need to invite my whole team, obviously. So everything else on here, you know, a working session, my time for prep, I don't have to schedule that out. I don't need that on my other calendar. You know, this is really my source of truth. But this team meeting, I do need on my calendar because I need to collaborate with others, invite other people. So I copied that and I simply tap here. It's gonna open this up. And in this case with the schedule links, it's actually scheduling it at that specific time. Of course, you can adjust the times as needed if it's a bit longer, a bit shorter, but I'm gonna just paste that in. And all I have to do is add my invitees, add any notes there, and that is it. Uh, I add that in and it shows up on my calendar and it's easy to see where it is in my day and keep track of things. So that makes it about as easy as possible to connect between you know, your more digital calendar tool sets and your planner. So now that I've shown you the overview of all the link locations and what you can do with this, Let's get into some troubleshooting and setup questions that I'm often hearing. So I mentioned earlier that you are able to connect any major calendar to your iPad calendar, and this will be necessary for you to make this connection in order to use the calendar scheduling feature to schedule directly to that calendar. So it's really easy to make this connection. Just tap on the settings app on your iPad and scroll down to the calendar section of the settings. And you'll see this area called accounts. Tap there and choose add an account. And now you see this list of all the different accounts that we'd be able to add. In this case, we're gonna add a Google account and so you'll just type in the email address associated with the calendar that you want to add. Hit next and enter in your password as well. And then you'll have to give it permission to access this account. Just choose allow. And then you can see you have your controls here. Specifically with the new functionality, I would suggest making sure you have both the calendar and mail toggled on since the planner shortcut does allow you to send email notes as well, but you can choose which settings to toggle on to use with this specific account. And at any time you can go back in and edit those settings for yourself as well. So jumping back into our Gmail calendar, just to show you how this sync works. If I go forward to show you a test event that I put on this Gmail calendar, you can see it here on this screen. 
And when I jump over then to my iPad iCal, you can see now that it's showing up there and it's assigned a color to that calendar so that from this single view, I can easily see which calendar it's coming from. So in my case, when I worked in a corporate role, I had both my personal calendar and my work calendar all coordinated to show up in one view. Now, if you use the Google portal for your calendar or Outlook at work, you can edit it on that other portal and it will sync up and show up and stay updated on your iPad. So by connecting these calendars, it really is a two-way sync. And so you can continue to manage your calendars and other places and they'll all sync back to the single view. Now you can also take any event from your calendar and move it over to another calendar as well, which makes it really easy just to coordinate and uh, sync up all of the tool sets on this one view on your iPad. So you saw there that I just switched that yoga flow over to my Gmail calendar. Now when I jump into my Gmail app, I can see that it's showing up right there on that day. And so I was able to easily transition it over to that calendar. So this is why I really pushed for this integration to be working through iOS because it does make it so easy to manage any other calendars in this single view. And then we're also able to take advantage of the shortcuts. Just a couple final notes on making sure that your calendar is set up to work well with the shortcut. When you go into your settings and down back into your calendar settings, you'll want to make sure that your weeks start with the same week start as the version of the planner you've chosen, just so that the views line up when you open up the calendar. So make sure to toggle either Sunday or Monday start to coordinate with the planner version that you've chosen to use. While you're in your calendar settings, you're also going to want to look at your default calendar chosen. Whichever calendar you choose as your default is the one that events will be scheduled to when you use the shortcut. Now you can always scroll down and change the calendar one off, but do make sure that your default is the one that you want to schedule to most often to reduce the number of clicks that you have to make to schedule to the right calendar from the shortcut. But you can see here, it is really easy to choose one calendar or another if you sometimes schedule to one calendar and sometimes to another. You can do that right within the dialog box. And that's it. If you followed along with these steps today, you should be all set and ready to go and make the most of your calendar shortcut scheduling integration along with your Laurel Studio Planner. I can't wait to hear how this makes your life a little bit easier and really streamlines that connection between your planner and taking action outside of your planner. You can do so much with this from scheduling events to sending quick email notes, scheduling reminders. Now, if you have any questions or run into any issues, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email by replying to your order confirmation or visiting the help center on our site. And as always, please follow along so that you can be notified of new videos. We're gonna be creating a ton of videos with tips on making the most of your planner and the new shortcut in the upcoming year. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.